Welcome back to Sunday. He is the medicine man, the sole doctor to the people living on a group of islands deep in the heart of Vanuatu. Dr. Derek Allen is a Kiwi who won't leave Malakula because he won't leave 35,000 people scattered through the archipelago without medical help, even though once he wasn't paid for seven months. And when Sunday's Miriama Kamo finally got to Norsip, she found the good doctor was about to be plunged into a maternity emergency. Music, medicine, a tropical island. Could be a romance novel, but it's this man's life, and the reality isn't all that romantic. Dr. Derek Allen lives on Malekula Island, been there 18 months. There are 35,000 people in his province, some who have never seen a white man, but many will likely come across this Kiwi. He's passionate about third world medicine. I've only got one life. Do it, do it something I enjoy. Something that pushes me, something that stretches me. Um, something that sometimes scares me, but it pushes, yeah. And I enjoy that. Challenging. Back home. He won't leave 35,000 people scattered through the archipelago without medical help, even though once he wasn't paid for seven months. And when Sunday's Miriam Akamo finally got to Norsip, she found the good doctor was about to be plunged into a maternity emergency. Music, medicine, a tropical island. Could be a romance novel, but it's this man's life, and the reality isn't all that romantic. Dr. Derek Allen lives on Malekula Island, been there 18 months. There are 35,000 people in his province, some who have never seen a white man, but many will likely come across this Kiwi. He's passionate about third world medicine. I've only got one life. Do it, do it something I enjoy. Something that pushes me, something that stretches me. Um, something that sometimes scares me, but it pushes, yeah. And I enjoy that. Challenging. Back home after taking a patient to Port Vila's hospital, but no time to relax. An urgent case awaits. What are you expecting with the woman and the baby? Well, I don't know. She, the baby could be alive or dead. It depends. Yeah. I'll go back immediately and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, could be a cesarean section soon. <laughs> Two, two villages over there. The sole doctor with a small nursing team. He's grateful of volunteers like Marg Thorpe, a visiting Gisborne nurse and friend. She helped me take that sick patient down last night to Vila. And here we are, back in my house. His house and ours for the next few days. But it's straight to the hospital. At work, a volunteer Japanese dental team. Derek checks on news of the pregnant woman, and it's bad. What happened to her? She delivered it. Oh, no. Stillborn baby. The mother lives in a remote village. She never made it to hospital. Sunrise. Seemingly idyllic. But it's not to be. A newborn isn't breathing, and there's no time to dry off from the morning swim. It's all on. Derek and Marg struggle to save the baby's life. They discover the suction machine hasn't been plugged in. It is a waste of time unless we have it connected to the wall. We need electricity. It's not looking good. They move the baby near a power supply. I've got this. Oh, He's got his work cut out for him today. Next door, two troubled labours. Yeah, the head, I can get my hand under the head. It's not engaged at all. Good size baby for a first baby. But labour is slow, Thanks. and this mum may need a caesarean. <coughs> Meanwhile, baby one is still <coughs> struggling. You stop breathing as if he breathes by himself. You stop for maybe 10 seconds. It's a cash-strapped hospital crying out for resources. We've got one incubator. We've got a baby who needs an incubator, but the baby, we're we'll going to have a look at that before we leave. She's 1.5 kilogram premature baby. What sort of a chance does a baby of that age have here? At the present stage, I'd say 60%. More than, more than half. It's looking good. This baby has a 50-50 chance. Breakfast. Absolutely. <laughs> Not what you doctor fainting on the job, is there? As for the new mum, her baby's in trouble. A caesarean is still on the cards. Mm. If she's progressing slowly, the baby's going to be more likely 
to breathe in that meconium and we're going to have problems like next door, okay? So shaping up to be a busy day then? Another day in the office. Baby one is still touch and go. The day is wearing on and so is Derek. Next, next. So we get you a walkabout, some in between them when the pain comes, just to help baby go down. So you've got two complications. You had two recess cases. Mm -hmm. One stillborn baby. Mm -hmm. is, is this a normal week? It happens. So far we've only had one fatality for that baby, which I never got to, which is a good week. No one's been dying around here. What is the, the most rewarding thing about this work? Pushing yourself to your limits and succeeding. I mean, I push myself to my limits and fail sometimes too. I mean, people do die because I'm at my limit, at my edge, and sometimes it all comes together. You've worked your hardest, you've read the books, you're doing the best you can, and they survive and they walk away. The caesarean scare is over. The new mother delivers naturally. Baby boy, you. And baby one is now breathing on his own. Finally, his mother gets to see him. She too is exhausted. I'm feeling quite all right. A final ward round before the day is over. Early morning, and we're off. Derek's running a clinic in a remote southern village. It's a trip we take in typical molecular style. Four-wheel drive, little suspension. A three and a half hour trip. Waiting for us at the other end is the mother of the stillborn child we heard of earlier. But first we track down a patient Derek hasn't seen for over six months. And what are you expecting her condition to be like? I expect it to be very ugly. It's going to be very ugly, um, what we see, I'm sure. His patient Beatrice oh, yeah. has an eye cancer. Oh, some one them. You're a bit thin. Oh, now you have some good now. You know, eat too much. You don't want to go to hospital no more. Yeah, we want them go. Why don't you go? I'm too expensive. Amy, look at eye, okay? I got some cream. Let me we look at new cream for you, okay? From New Zealand. Let me look at eye. No problem. No fright. Aye, aye, no good. Oh, I know good. We know we know good. I've seen it before. But let's see if we can make it better. Oh, I mean, we look no good. This, I've told people this look no good. They understand. It's been growing for eight years, and what we see is shocking. Yeah, it's skin cancer. Too much sun. So it would have started off looking like... It would have started off like a little, a little dry patch on around her eye, and maybe above or below, um, and it's just been untreated and just spread. I mean, we have lots of these cancers in New Zealand, but they're treated at a much, much, much earlier t uh, time. It looks bad, but amazingly, Derek believes it's fixable. I mean, obviously, it hasn't penetrated her skull and obviously it isn't imposing on her brain because she's got full use of her arms and legs. She's got good, clear mentition. She understands things. Things are fine, so it hasn't actually cracked through her skull yet. That's a slim hope it's there. Mm. How old would she be? She's 52. 52. It's unusual for the islanders to know their age. Yeah, she's around 52. <laughs> <laughs> a long life by island standards. Take a look in Beatrice's home. No light, dirt floors. She's been made to live alone. It's, it's, it's shocking. The smell of her wound is just too much. Beatrice recycles her gauze. Derek's been told before, leave her to die. She's a victim of circumstance. A corrugated tin shack, you imagine somewhere at 35 degrees, half past seven in the morning, this will be an oven for her. Mm. You know. What do you think of the attitude that patients like Beatrice should just be let go? There's nothing you can do for them. Unsuitable. Unsuitable attitude. It's probably realistic, but it's unsuitable. You take that dressing down, I'll take some pictures so I can send them around the Pacific, see if we can get a plastic surgeon or radiotherapist interested. Good, that's number one, okay. Beatrice's story gets worse. I know the old fella doesn't want you to go because he doesn't want you to be assaulted again. <laughs> Norsip Hospital has little security and on her last trip there, Beatrice was raped. There's been twice while I've been there. Two patients have been assaulted, raped. Two women have been raped in the hospital. Nice to see you again. Hate it. And we're getting together a um, 
intercom system, well, a buzzer system. If you get sick, you come to hospital. We make hospital safe. No bad fella next time. Okay? Okay. Beatrice is left with cream, gauze and money to come to hospital. Whether she does remains to be seen. Back on the road, bound for remote lum up. Two more hours and the road is shocking. Thirty odd tribes, dozens of different languages, and Derek, the only doctor for 16 islands. He says it's not good enough. I think this place doesn't have a political voice and therefore it's ignored, so it gets no money. Why should it? There's 35,000 people here. They should have facilities, they should have recognition, they should have better care for its doctors. Why should it go two to three years without a doctor? He's no stranger to third world need. Derek's worked in places like Africa, Ukraine, Romania, remote places. It's where he's most at home. Good afternoon. Also one. This is the mother of the stillborn child, a victim of transport problems. Okay. Baby was looked like it'd been dead for some time. So obviously it was alive maybe Tuesday morning. And if we got the baby Monday night, we could perhaps done a caesarean section. Say, baby. But transport, huge problem. Just Derek's hospital in Norsip is no, rough, but basic. it has sort of nothing on the like hospital it. here in Lumup. Pretty basic. Come on into the um, ensuite, <coughs> delivery suite. Here we go. There's um, showers, basins, taps. Maybe you could call this a tap. It's a little bit rough, you could say. Um, <laughs> a little bit rough? A little bit rough. And here we have the shower. This one works. Well, it's actually a tap, it could be a garden hose. And here we have toilets. Toilets as usual. Um, oh. Stand in the right place and do your thing toilets, which might have a flush and might have not. Otherwise known as backpacker toilets. Very crude, very rough. Um, but it's and as for the birthing basic. unit, well, it's not as bad. It's basic. I think at night time they use that light over there called a torch to deliver babies with. Delivering babies by torchlight. Absolutely. We were doing that in Norsip until Christmas. Why do you love working in such rough conditions? The people need. The people need is amazing. It's very rewarding. I'm a hedonist. <laughs> I love doing it. It's not like you make much money. No, you don't do it for money. If I had things for money, it wouldn't be here. Um, you do it for the pleasure of the people. They're so happy. They've got nothing. They've got no, um, no doctors here at all. No doc if I left Norsip now, they probably wouldn't have a doctor for the next two or three, four years. Who knows? You pull them big wind. Derek makes 15,000 New Zealand dollars a year. It's almost laughable, more so given that until recently he hadn't been paid for seven Maybe months. a little bit too fat fat, huh? Might have too fat. Back in Norsip, the patients keep rolling up. So would you say you're living the dream, Derek? Living the dream, I'm getting close, OK? I'm doing the work I enjoy, but it could be better. A helicopter is what he's after to relieve the transport problems. A seemingly impossible dream. It's a dream, it's big, but it's hardly worth having a dream unless you have something worthwhile dreaming about. It's a big commitment. It's a big commitment, but heck, some people look upon it as a um, marriage substitute, also a big commitment. <laughs> Till death us do part, like, as oh, the yeah. helicopters are. <laughs> Suddenly the moment has come and here we stand. Do you get lonely? Occasionally, no more than that. Yeah, always get lonely sometimes, but it's not, not a big feature. For a doctor, this is exciting, but you do have to sacrifice sometimes relationships, families. And that's okay? Well, I probably wasn't very good at them anyhow. You know, it's been said that people in places like this are either missionaries, mercenaries, or misfits. Which are you? I'm not a mercenary, because I get paid so poorly. I'm not really a missionary. It's not quite me. So, Misfits by trial error. You come with Misfit? Road less travelled, I suppose. I get pleasure from this. This is pleasurable. Bottom line, I wouldn't do it if I didn't enjoy it. And the cameraman on that story, Owen Goodwin. Surgeons here in New Zealand are looking at Owen's footage of some of the cases to see if there's anything they can help with. And if you want to help in some way, 
Details are on our website. Well, check it out. This pile of boxes, surgical and medical equipment from Southern Cross's Brightside Hospital and Gillies Hospital. It is just some of the help and offers of help that have poured into Sunday since we ran our story last week on Kiwi doctor Derek Allen. Music, medicine, a tropical island. Could be a romance novel, but it's this man's life, and the reality isn't all that romantic. Dr. Derek Allen lives on Malekula Island, been there 18 months. There are 35,000 people in his province, some who have never seen a white man, but many will likely come across this Kiwi. He's passionate about third world medicine. I've only got one life. Just do, it, do it something I enjoy. Air Vanuatu have already taken medical supplies up and are going to fly these boxes to remote Malakula Island. Uh, there are doctors and several nurses who would like to travel up as well to help. A project manager is offering to build a hospital facility. Rotary are looking at making a donation. And as for Beatrice... Let me look at eye, OK? I've got some cream. Let me we look at new cream for you, OK? From New Zealand. Let me look at eye. No and Mercy and Ascot Hospitals okay. here are offering to help Beatrice. If you'd like to help in some way, here are the contact details. Operation Vanuatu Care of Marg Thorpe, the boundary, one main road, Mataraka, Gisborne. Now Marg is a nurse who is coordinating the offers of help. More details about the Operation Vanuatu on our website. And also, of course, more information about Glenda Jackson's speech and the Leukemia and Blood Foundation.